Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. All right. Y'all know I dropped these on Tuesdays, but way, way too much has been happening, so I had to had to drop this today, honestly. Uh, we'll get right into this, man. A lot of moves going on in the city. Saints and Pelicans making moves, making moves, so definitely had to get this out there to y'all. Um, I will be back breaking down all the game film and things like that probably tomorrow. Been busy in the process of a move or whatnot, but... Here we go. I'll just talk about what's going on right now. All right. Starting off with the Saints, uh, a couple signings. We had Chris Hogan, wide receiver. He worked out today. They signed him today. Um, old veteran. Been in the league for, you know, many, 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 many years. Uh, 33 years old. Don't like that turning 34. So, I mean, I think he's just a, a camp guy, somebody that's got to come in, compete right away with the younger guys. Kind of help the younger guys as well. Now that, I mean, the oldest guy on the, the roster is Traquan Tra- Smith. Kind of bring in a veteran, uh, get these young guys through camps and things like that. Uh, he had eight catches and 14 catches his previous two years. So, I mean, he's not not really active playing, you know, at, at the last couple of years. But I think he, he's still a great veteran, uh, you know, to come in and, and help these young guys out. I honestly don't think he'll make the team, but we'll see We'll see where that goes. Um, next up, Kendall Donerson, uh, linebacker, seven-round pick from the Packers, 2018. I think this is another camp body, just some depth at linebacker. I also believe this has no effect on the Quan situation. Um, not 100% sure on that because obviously he didn't leave with a deal, but I don't think that this will impact you know him coming or not coming in any shape or fashion. I think this is just another camp body because Quan didn't sign, so just kind of have to get a guy in there, especially with you know uh, camp starting up real, real soon. And I think uh, Quan Alexander is still a ways away from uh, actually, you know, Returning to 100% things like that. So maybe the Saints are just waiting on him to show that he's 100% because when he took that visit, he was just just cleared for football activity. So, I mean, he really hasn't done anything to probably show he can actually still run and play and move and things like that. So I think the Saints are probably just waiting on that to get confirmation. Don't want to sign a guy that's, that's hurt and things like that. So I'm sure in a couple of weeks, if he's not signed, they'll bring him back in, you know, See what he's got going on and things like that. Uh, last but not least, Brian Poole. Um, if you watch my top videos of the three corners to shine, sign, excuse me, Brian Poole was on there. Um, slot cornerback was real, real good the last two years with uh, the Jets. Former Falcon, Falcons let him go for absolutely nothing, which which is hilarious in hindsight. They didn't even like offer him a, a tender. They just told him be gone. So he's found his way after that. Uh, like I said, been been with the Jets for a couple of years, played in the slot. Thank Pro Football Focus, who I hate, but I'll throw it out there when it's a good stat, you know, <laughs> when it goes my way. I think they had him rated as the seventh or ninth best slot corner in the league last year. So, I mean, that's pretty good and things like that. So, I mean, I'm excited about that. That's obviously the, the most uh, exciting signing we've had this offseason so far. I think he's going to come in, start right away. Um, I think that does mean... I kind of hinted at this earlier in uh, a couple videos ago that C.J. Gardner-Johnson may be moving to the outside this year. Um, obviously, he's he was great in the slot for us, but he's actually more built like a outside corner anyway. So I think they're going to make that adjustment and, and probably move him to outside this year, especially if we don't sign another corner because I think, hate to say it, Lattimore's probably going to get suspended, so that may end up starting Gardner-Johnson, Paulson Adebo or Patrick Robinson, and then Poole in the slot. So I think we may open up week one with that trio as our corners. But when, when Lattimore comes back, if we run out there with Lattimore, Poole, and Gordon Johnson, I think that's a solid, solid, solid uh, cornerback trio, obviously with Malcolm Jenkins and Marcus Williams uh, at safety. That's a pretty good secondary. I haven't gone through all the secondaries in the NFL, but, I mean, I think that's top 10, top 5 right off my head. But yeah, man, those are the three guys the Saints, the Saints sign. Um, I'm excited. Uh, Hogan, on a scale of 1 to 10, that's about a 7 just because I think he'll help the young guys more than he'll actually help the Saints. Kendall Donaldson, that's just a camp body. Not really, you know, up or down on that. Brian Poole, I rate that about 8 out of 10 right there. Um, he's a slot corner, so although we need an outside corner, that's why he's not, you know, higher. But I will review all these guys' uh, videos are coming soon, game field breakdowns. I know a lot of y'all come to watch that, not just 
you know, hear me talk and things like that. So I'll definitely get that going uh, starting tomorrow, hopefully. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how they turn out on film. Because you know what? That eye in the sky never lies. It never does. Also, a couple, couple quick notes. We worked out uh, wide receiver Damian Willis, Trevor Davis, uh, guys that I just had, you know, had to come to the workout and things like that. So defense and uh, Justice Reed also worked out with us. None of those guys signed, um, but I guess we can keep an eye out, transaction, wire, and things like that to see if anything changes. Um, th these signings that we had, Hogan, Donaldson, Poole, all basically for the minimum, so that doesn't affect the cap in any way. Saints cap is still remain the same, which is crazy because we're like the big negative 100 million that everyone, you know, claimed we had. Now we're like top five, top 10 in the NFL with remaining cap available. So, I mean, there's that. So, if, you know, any, any moves we're thinking about making, trades or anything like that, those are still on the table after these signings. That, that changes absolutely nothing. So, that's good. Oh, and lastly, almost forgot. Superdome changed its name. It would be the Caesar Superdome now, which is a great fit for New Orleans, obviously. Uh, you know, the Falcons try to, you know, they try to jack off style, try to be the, become the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Look, look, we started that. Now, look, y'all can have that. Y'all can have that. We own to something bigger and better. 20-year name and rights deal. So, I mean, they'll be there for a good little bit. Hopefully that comes with some upgrades to the dome, you know, inside and out, mostly inside. Not really. Don't really care how the outside looks. It, it's fine to me. But the inside, hopefully it gets some upgrade in there, you know, catch some games, things like that. But, yeah, man, that'll wrap up the Saints. It's, it's been a lot going on. That's why I say I couldn't wait, couldn't wait to do this until Tuesday because just way too much going on, man. I had to, had to get on, going on, get this out there. But, yeah, now we'll move on to the Pels, man. And this is a, sorry if you had your headphones up loud or something like that. This is big right here, man. This is what I've been asking for. David Griffin, you're almost getting back to my good graces. He had the fleece of the offseason so far, NBA offseason just now starting up. Drafts coming up soon and things like that. But if you don't know, now you know. The Pels have traded for Jonas Valanciunas, the number 17 pick, and the number 51 pick uh, in this year's draft. And we're giving up Eric Bledsoe. Round of applause for that one. Steven Adams. Another round of applause. The number 10 pick and the number 40 pick. Also a protected 2022 first round pick via the Lakers, which would also be another late round pick next year. So basically three first round, well, two first round picks, the number 40 pick, and you get number 17 pick, which is another first round pick this year. Uh, the picks, they gave up a couple. I'm not too worried about those picks. Obviously, we got a, a haul from the Bucks. That Lakers pick won't be a lottery pick. That's not, you know, anything. And those second-round picks are just basically swaps. That doesn't move me at all. The biggest thing was to get Adams and Bledsoe off these books. Bledsoe has around two years, $40 million left that last year. It's not guaranteed. So he was scheduled to make $18 million and $19 million over the next two years. And you just couldn't have that with the Pelicans. Uh especially with the free agents we have coming up and the moves we want to make. You just couldn't have that on the books. And also, Steven Adams having two years, $35 million on the books. Absolutely unnecessary. Um, obviously, this is David Griffin almost admitting, without admitting, that he made a mistake because it was no reason for him to sign Steven Adams to that deal. No way, no how he should have signed Steven Adams to, the, to an extension after just trading for him. Didn't even see how the year was going to play out. Didn't see how he's going to work with Zion. Just blindly went to sign him for two years 35 million he's got lucky that he found a trade partner um partner for him but it was it was a dumb move but in, and you know it worked out in the end for him but you can't keep living like that you can't keep living on the edge like that getting uh Jonas Valanciunas I think that's a, a great great pickup he averaged 17 points 12 and a half rebounds couple assists about a block a game but most importantly he shot 37 percent from three didn't attempt a lot but when he did I mean, he made a good percentage of them. So you can't ask for more than that. Uh, that's going to be perfect to pair with Zion, a big man that's not just going to stand in the paint like Steven Adams. You know, no offense to Adams. He's just not the, the right fit with Zion. It's just never going to work. Obviously, him and Zion are both in the paint. But Zion, you know, it's pre takes precedent. He's, he's obviously the star player here. So he's going to get, you know, what he wants. And what Zion needs is an open, open paint. And that's what Valentino is going to bring. He has a, a nice little mid-range. He makes his free throws. He's a 78% free throw shooter, so that's always a plus right there. And he's just a good basketball player, man. He's like 29 years old, expiring contract. So if he doesn't play well, Pelicans don't have to bring him back. 
They just can't do they they cannot do what they did with Steven Adams. Just sign him to extension today just because they got him. How about you see how it plays out and then you go from there. So we'll see. But the cap space has opened up. Um I've been saying rumors about Kyle Lowry. I saw rumors about a Miles Turner trade. So I mean it's it's open. If if I think if we can get a a Lowry signing and maybe sign and trade Alonzo for Miles Turner, I'm I'm all with it. Um like I said, we'll see we'll see how far this goes. I also would like Lonzo to return. This cap space, you know, opens up the possibility of matching any offer that he may receive. So we'll just see how that goes, man. It's it's been a great day. I like the move from both teams today. Uh, can't complain. I wish the Saints would have signed the outside corner. That's really my own only complaints about them. But hey man, training camp's heating up. At this point you got what you got for the Saints and the Pels, they still have a long way to go to actually, you know. Proves to me that they'll be actual playoff contenders when, you know, when this season starts. But they're off to a right. They're off to a good start, honestly. Uh, helping the new coach out, Willie Green. Roster's already better than when he, you know, signed to be this coach. So it's it's looking up for them. But yeah, man, I just had to get this out out there to y'all real real quick. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Much love, man. You can you like, comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed. That'll be greatly appreciated. Thank y'all for tuning in once again. It's the Boot Tragedies, and I'm out.